Hey guys, it's Chris from Double Eagle Gunworks and we're out here on the range and we're going to be doing part two of the uh, ammunition seminar where we're talking about the uh, all the characteristics of ammunition and I've got a, a couple of different uh, rifle ammunition out here. Uh, we've got uh, 223, we've got 556, got 300 blackout and we've got 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, the uh, 223 and the 556 are your standard AR uh, type rifle rounds, uh, but you can also have those uh, rounds in uh, bolt action uh, rifles as well. Uh, but with your, your 223, it's going to be a uh, rimless case, like we're talking about in part one, uh, where we talk about the different uh, case types. So this one is a rimless case. And it's also a bottleneck case. So it, it starts out this width and then necks down to where it will accept the 22 caliber bullet. And then uh, this one is a full metal jacket with a soft point uh, in this particular uh, 223 round. Um, and this one uh, is a, this one's a 55 grain bullet so it's a little bit heavier uh, than some of your your 22 long rifle uh, bullets would be but the the 223 uh, normally will be somewhere around a 40 to a 60 grain bullet uh, in the that caliber now the 556 five, just looking at them side by side each other you really can't tell a whole lot of difference between the two calibers. The main difference between 223 and 556 is normally the case is a little bit thicker uh, in a 556 than it is a 223 uh, because the um, 556 would generate just a little bit more pressure than the 223 does, so they make the case just a little bit thicker but the bullet diameter or the caliber uh, and the, the bullet weight are very similar or they're the same as the 223 because it's the same same size bullets. They're both uh, basically a 22 caliber bullet and both of these are 50 grain bullets or 55 grain uh, bullets. Yeah, both of them 55 grain. Uh, so they, they look very similar and uh, depending on the AR that you have, uh, if you have a uh, 223 wild barrel or either a 556 barrel, then you can shoot either one of these calibers in the same rifle. Uh, but if you if your rifle is just for 223, then you shouldn't shoot uh, 556 in that particular barrel. It's a little bit of ballistics differences uh, between pressures. Uh, so you don't want to mix the two if you only have the barrel that's supposed to be shot with 223. The next caliber up is the 300 blackout. And the 300 blackout is based off of the 556 case. So what they did was they took the 556 case and cut it off right below where the, the neck starts on the 556 caliber and made it into a, a straight wall case at first and then they necked it down just slightly so that it would uh, accept a 30 caliber bullet. So you go from a 22 caliber bullet on the 556 to a 30 caliber bullet on the 300 blackout. So uh, in most states they don't uh, allow you to hunt deer or bigger uh, animals with a uh, 223 or a 556 because they say it's not a heavy enough round for a clean kill. But a 300 blackout is uh, a good hunting round because it is a um, bigger round, it's heavier, and uh, it has more uh, energy behind it than the, the 556 does. And this particular uh, 300 blackout here is a 
hollow point bullet. Uh, so it's a jacketed hollow point, and it is a 120 grain bullet. And uh, these are uh, supposed to be in the supersonic uh, rating of the speed for the 300 blackout. Uh, the other one that we have here, they look very similar. You can, if you had a close up of it, you can see that this bullet is just a little bit fatter and maybe a little bit longer, but this one weighs uh, 220 grains where the other one is just 120 grains. So when you get up into the heavier caliber or heavier weight bullets uh, like this one, then the 300 blackout goes to subsonic. Uh, so it's a slower moving bullet, but it has more mass behind it uh, when it hits the target. Now, the 300 Blackout is uh, typically an AR-style uh, rifle round, uh, but it has been uh, incorporated into some uh, bolt-action rifles as well. Now, for a uh, true hunting round, the uh, become really popular is the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. And this one, again, is a bottleneck uh, cartridge, uh, rimless, case design, it's got the groove in the back so that the extractor uh, will grab it and pull it out of the rifle. Uh, but this one was developed off of a case similar to a uh, 308 case. So the, the back end of the case uh, stays this, this size and then it has a sharp neck, a uh, sharp shoulder right here that goes down to the neck of the, the case and then it accepts a 6.5 millimeter wide uh, bullet uh, to go down in the case. And the, the bullets on these are very long and skinny. Um, and the, the bullet weight on this one is um, it's a 140 grain bullet. So it's a, a lighter weight bullet than you would normally find um, in a 308, but it has very uh, similar ballistic characteristics as the 308 and it is a, a lighter recoiling rifle uh, when you shoot it than what a 308 would be as well. Uh, this one is a, uh, a jacketed hollow point and then the other uh, 6.5 Creedmoor that we have out here uh, this one is also well this one's 129 grain uh, bullet and this one is a jacketed soft point so there's a little bit of a, uh, of the lead sticking out the end of the bullet there and it helps it when it hits its uh, target and hits something hard it mushrooms and uh, really causes a, a nice wound channel uh, when it hits the target so and with the the 6.5 Creedmoor it was originally designed to be used in bolt action hunting rifles but uh, it's also been uh, developed now to where uh, some AR-10 style rifles, uh, the ones that would normally work with 308 caliber cartridges, uh, they have started uh, making some barrels now for the AR-10s that are in the 6.5 uh, Creedmoor. So now it can be in the, the AR style rifles as well as uh, your bolt action rifles. One more difference that uh, we want mention on uh, ammunition and this goes primarily for handgun ammunition and rifle ammunition uh, is whether it is a center fire cartridge or whether it is a rim fire cartridge uh, your 22 long rifle 22 short 22 magnums uh, or your uh, 0.17 HMR are all going to be a rim fire cartridge which just means that the primer for the cartridge is built into the rim of the case whereas on a center fire cartridge you have the primer that is in the center of the case and it is a um, separate piece from the case so that you can reload the um, a center fire round by popping out that primer putting a new one in and then uh, reloading the case with a 22 or a, a rim fire case they are not reloadable 
because the primer is built into the rim of the case. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, when you're uh, picking out your ammunition that you get the right kind. When we're talking about ammunition, we're going to need to talk about the, the different parts of the ammunition as well. And with traditional centerfire uh, cartridges, there's four basic components that go into the ammunition. Uh, you've got the primer, you've got the case, you got the powder, and then you got the bullet itself. <clears throat> and on a center fire ammunition, the primer is this little piece right here in the center of the head of the case. And it is a separate piece from the case. When you uh, go to reload a case like this, you punch that old primer out and then press a new one in. And then uh, this would be the, your, your case for the, um, the round here. So this is a nine millimeter case, and it's uh, like we talked about earlier, the a rimless case, and it's just a straight wall here. Uh, so you would put the the primer in the head of the case. the The case would be sitting like this. Then you would put some powder of some sort. Uh, there's a lot of different powders uh, out on the market. Uh, this one just happens to be uh, designed for uh, pistols, so I'm, I'm using this when I do some reloading. And, uh, and powders can be several different shapes, but um, there's lots of different ones on the market. And then your bullets are going to be the pieces that go in the end of the case, so they would just be pressed into the the case sort of like that but it'd be seated a little bit further into the the case for it to be a uh, the correct length for the the nine millimeter but you've either got the this one is a solid bullet here it's got that star pattern almost like a screwdriver end on it uh, here and then this one is another type of nine millimeter bullet this one is just a full metal full metal jacket with a round nose so it's just your traditional types of uh, bullets and this um, solid one here is a hundred grain bullet and the um, the round nose are 125 grain bullets but both of them or the same diameter so they would work in the nine millimeter case so that's the different components of the uh, the ammunition whether it be a um, handgun cartridge or a rifle cartridge uh, it's going to have those same uh, components in it uh, basic difference but with a rimfire cartridge if you were uh, talking about rimfire is it would not have the primer that you would see on the outside uh, of the head of the case because the primer on a uh, rimfire case is built into the actual rim of the case rather than being a separate piece that is pressed into uh, the case itself. So the way that all those four parts work together in the cartridge, you have the, the primer in the, the head of the case. When the firing pin or the striker uh, <clears throat> hits the primer it causes the primer to ignite which sets off the uh, explosion going into the case which would then ignite the powder that is inside the case and with the bullet in the the case when the gases start expanding in the case, they don't have anywhere to go, so they push the bullet out of the case. Oh, that one's stuck in there good now. Uh, but it blows the, the bullet out the end of the case, and the bullet exits the end of the barrel. So that's the way the, the bullet works, or the, uh, the cartridge works. Uh, firing pin hits the primer, primer ignites the powder, powder expands with the gases, blows the bullet 
out the end of the case and you fire the round. There's a lot more calibers uh, that we could talk about with rifle ammunition. This just happens to be the four uh, that I've got uh, examples of, but there is a ton of uh, rifle cal uh, calibers out there, um, all the way from your a lot smaller uh, calibers than what I've got here with the 223. You've got the, uh, the point 17 Hornet all the way up uh, to your uh, 338 uh, Lapua round. So some very big ranges of sizes that you can find in rifle uh, cartridges. Okay guys, when you are looking at an ammunition box and trying to figure out what it is that you're, you're buying, uh, they're going to have, normally the caliber is going to be written pretty boldly uh, in uh, lettering up here and then it may tell you uh, up here as well what uh, grain bullet it is and what the, the shape and uh, makeup of the bullet is. This one is a, a spire, spire point so it's just a, it's a soft lead nose uh, bullet and it's 55 grains. Uh, but if you look down in the smaller print down here it gives you the muzzle velocity of what the the round's going to be and then it, uh, what the the drop is as it goes out to uh, 100 to out to 500 yards but the main thing that you're going to be looking for when you're trying to figure out whether this ammunition will fit the rifle that i have is these numbers right here the 223 remington if that matches uh, what your barrel says on the rifle then you're good to go on the ammunition the bullet weight is going to vary uh, it could be anywhere from like we talked about from a uh, 35 40 grain bullet up to 55 60 grain bullet but always make sure that your box of ammunition matches what the barrel says on your rifle so uh, if you like the video uh, like and subscribe down at the bottom and check the links in the description down below for uh, part one, uh, talking about the um, handgun cartridges, and then uh, part three, where we talk about shotgun cartridges. And check out our website, doubleeaglegunworks.com, for more blogs on the topic.